Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 131 on solving Newton's second law problems using iterative methods. In the last unit, we have looked at describing motion using iterative methods. Given an acceleration, we can solve for the position and the velocity step by step. Now we want to add the idea of this unit, forces, which are the causes of acceleration. A key principle in solving Newton's second law problems iteratively is the idea of object egoism discussed earlier in this preparation. Object egoism can be summarized through the idea of me, 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 and right now. This can be restated as that only the forces that are acting at any given instant on an object are relevant. What happened before, what happened in the future, don't really matter. The easiest way to learn how to solve Newton's second law problems through iterative methods is probably through an example. So let's begin with our first example. Say we have a 1,000 kilogram car stopped at a stoplight. When the light turns green, the engine of the car will begin to apply a constant force of 5,000 newtons to the car. We want to model the motion of this car for the first 0 0.02 seconds using iterative methods with a 0 0.01 second step. We begin by constructing our table, where we have the usual columns of time, position, velocity, and acceleration. We've now added a new column, force, with the unit's newtons. And we have our times 0, 0 0.01, because we're working in a 0 0.01 second step, and then 0 0.02 seconds, which is as far as we care to go for this particular problem. Let's begin with t equals 0. Thinking about one instant at a time, what is happening with the car at t equals zero? Well, we can define the stoplight to be def position equals zero, so we'll do so. We also know that the car is stopped, which tells us that the initial velocity of the car is also zero. What else do we know that at t equals zero? Well, we know that the engine is providing a net force of 5,000 newtons to the car. We can now use this net force to solve for the acceleration of the car using Newton's second law, F equals ma. Or rearranged, the acceleration is the force applied divided by the mass of the car. In this particular case, the force applied is 5,000 newtons and the mass is 1,000 kilograms, giving us acceleration of five meters per second squared. Now let's move on to the next instant in time. 0 0.01 seconds. Again, we know that the force that the engine is applying to the car is a constant 5,000 newtons. So we can just put in 5,000 newtons for the force applied to the car. We can solve for the acceleration of the car in the same way using F equals ma, which again we have 5,000 newtons divided by 1,000 kilograms giving us, again, an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. The next thing we might be interested in is the velocity of the car. Now we think back to how we solve problems iteratively. A key principle is that one instant predicts the next. So in this case, we're going to use t equals 0 to predict t equals 0 0.01. We're going to use the fundamental definition of acceleration as delta v over delta t. We can explode the delta into v final minus v initial and rearrange the equation into this form. Now let's look at starting to put in some of the numbers. The initial velocity over this interval is 0 meters per second. So we put in 0 meters per second for the initial velocity. The acceleration, with the idea of one instant predicting the next, is 5 meters per second squared. And the delta t, the change in time, is 0 0.01 seconds. So we put 0 0.01 in for delta t. Substituting in all of these numbers and turning the crank, we get a velocity at t equals 0 0.01 of 0 0.05 meters per second. The next thing we might be interested in is to solve for the position. Again one instant predicts the next. So we're going to use t equals zero to predict t equals 0 0.01. This time we're going to use the fundamental definition of velocity as delta x over delta t. We expand the delta into x final minus x initial 
and do some algebraic manipulation to get this familiar form. Now let's look at what value should be substituted for each of these variables. Again, in this step, the initial time is t equals zero, so the initial position should be zero meters. The velocity is also zero meters per second because we're using one instant, t equals zero, to predict t equals 0 0.01. And the delta t is 0 0.01. The change in time is 1 one hundredth of a second. Substitute in all of these numbers and you can quickly see that the position is zero for 0 0.01 seconds. Now, this might seem a little strange, but it's in fact correct. Because at t equals zero, the car does have an acceleration, so its velocity changes from t equals zero to 0 0.01 but the car does not have a velocity, so its position over that interval does not actually change. Let's take a pause from our example to think about a general procedure. First, we identify what is the force at any given instant. Second, we think about translating that force to the acceleration using Newton's second law. Third, we move into solving for the velocity. In this case, we use one instant to predict the next and the definition of acceleration. Finally, we move into calculating the velocity, the position, where again, one instant predicts the next and we use the fundamental definition of velocity. Let's apply these ideas to solve for the motion of the car from point zero 0.01 to point zero 0.02. At point zero 0.02, the force is still a constant 5,000 newtons. We can again use F equals MA to solve for the acceleration of the car, which is once again 5 meters per second squared. Now let's move on to solving for the velocity. We use the definition of acceleration, which we blow apart the delta into V final minus V initial, rearrange into this algebraic form, and now we start thinking about what numbers go and where. Here we're using T equals 0.01 to predict 0 0.02. So the initial velocity is 0 0.05. This is my initial, this is my final. I'm thinking one little step. So my initial velocity is 0 0.05 meters per second. My acceleration is five meters per second squared. And my delta t from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 is 0 0.01 seconds. Substituting in these values, we get a final velocity of 0.1 meters per second. Finally, we move on to position, use the fundamental definition of velocity, expand the delta, rearrange algebraically, and start putting in numbers. Again, we're going from 0.01 to 0.02, so our initial position is zero. We're not going all the way back to zero, we're just considering this one step. So our initial is zero, our velocity is 0 0.05, and our delta is a tenth, one one hundredth of a second, from 0.02 to 0 0.01. Substituting in these values, we get a final position of 0 0.0005 meters. And this concludes the problem.